I'm John Triay. I'm the Etsy NFV technical manager, and I work for Docomo, based in Munich, Germany. And as usual, I will give the first presentation in the tutorial session. Uh, it's more about an introduction to the IAG NFE and also to explain a little bit about the, the progress uh, on the technical work and an overview also of the different releases that we are working on. So I have split the presentation very similar as I have done several times in the past already. So first of all, the overview, and then uh, I will delve into details about the release two and release three. In any case, I will not go too much in detail because the time does not allow for it, but um, I hope that at least you can grasp the general ideas about the releases. So, the, if you know the IAG NFE, uh, first meeting took place in 2013. Since then, we have been um, splitting the work into releases. Um, we started the first two years. At that time, we did not identify yet that it was a release one because we were just focusing on trying to check the feasibility of the NFV. And for that, we did a number of reports and specifications. And the main outcome was the definition description of the NFV architecture of framework. And in that framework, what we did was to identify the main components to build an NFV system, which were the infrastructure, the virtualized, virtualized network functions, the abstractions on composition of VNFs to create network services, and then on all the management and orchestration entities responsible for managing this. And that's the NFV manual. Uh, when we finished the first two years, then we realized that we had to keep doing some work because there were gaps in terms of uh, specification. And we also wanted to ensure that we were going to have in the market products and solutions that were interoperable uh, based on the architectural framework that we defined initially. And that is basically the main focus of the release too. We are specifying interfaces, descriptors that try to provide a technical answer to each one of the aspects that we identified in the first two years. And some of my colleagues then will also give a lot more details about one, one of these, for example, the, the descriptors. And release two basically sets up the foundation to build an NFV system, but we need to enhance it. And there are different reasons because, first of all, we need to make sure that we are confident when we build an NFV system that the network operator will be able to operate it properly. And this is the main focus of the release three. We are trying to enhance the NFE architectural framework. We are building a number of features on top of it to make it fully operational and ready for expansive deployment. And some of the features here are listed. I will also give you some more examples later on in the presentation with concrete examples of features that we have completed so far. Okay, so what we do right now in the IAC NFE uh, we are doing release to maintenance. Um, we have already completed a couple of rounds of maintenance. We are also uh, completing a few pieces, gaps. Um, one of them, for example, is the recent completion or expected completion of the descriptors. We, are, we have also a few technical gaps in terms, for example, to enhance security of VNF packages and the APIs. And we are also um, now working on creating test specifications for the API conformance uh, of SOL uh, APIs. And of course, we are also working building towards the release three features. And here we have a few remaining studies, but mostly all the work is already happening at the stage two, and right now even at stage three level. So let me give you a few uh, details about release two. Um, I hope that by now you already know most of it, but uh, release two basically uh, sets up the foundation of the basic functionality and capabilities to build an NFE system. Um, we base the specification of interfaces and descriptors based on what we uh, first analyzed in the first two years of the IHG. And at that time, what we did already was to already uh, mm, describe that there was a design phase of the network. Um, for that matter, we built the descriptors uh, specifications. We have one for the network services, we have one for the VNFs, and we also have a way to package the VNFs so they can be distributed to the operators and deploy to the runtime. Um, the runtime means that the operator then is able to have the VNFs deployed on a virtualized infrastructure. And we have different layers or 
components on the system here when we talk. Uh, we have network services, VNFs, and infrastructure. And how we realized that? We realized it in SCNFE terms with the NFE Mano uh, stack. Um, each one of the entities that we built in our system, we have a correspondence on the architectural framework. So for example, for the orchestration and management of the uh, network services, we identified the NFEO, uh, which is responsible for that, for management and orchestration of network services and overall resource uh, on the network. Then we have the VNFM, which is the one responsible for managing the VNFs. And then we have the VIM, responsible for managing the infrastructure. And this is basically the basic functionality that we define in release two specifications, uh, interfaces and descriptors and models to make sure that we can manage and orchestrate all this. As I mentioned, we are working on maintenance. Uh, the reason is that we published a number of specifications already in 2016. Since then, we have already done three rounds of maintenance, and now we are on the fourth round, which is more focus at the moment on protocols and data model specifications. And the reason is that because now that APIs and descriptors is going, are going to be implemented, we need direct feedback on these specifications. As part of maintenance, we do usual stuff like correction of bugs and alignment. Um, but we also do uh, and incorporate feedback that we receive from early implementations, mostly, for example, from open source. So for example, we got uh, very good feedback from alignment with OpenStack. We got also feedback from OSM in terms of information models for IFA 11 and IFA 14. And we also uh, have sometimes contributions from companies participating in ONAP, also providing their feedback on their site. Some of the capabilities that we have done uh, or initially released uh, have changed uh, slightly. Uh, the reason is that uh, mostly the reason is basically because of alignment with the stage three. Uh, so from a stage three, we uh, found that to make something uh, fully implementable, uh, some of the functionality need to be better expressed or better described uh, uh, in a stage two level. For example, we had to do some merging of uh, interfaces and, and also merging of uh, different operations in the system. Uh, on the baseline, the functionality does not change, but the way that specification looks like does change a little bit. And these are just an example of uh, topics that have changed. So if you have ever downloaded the first version of release two specifications, please make sure that you also download the latest versions because some of the, the topics have changed a little bit. A very important milestone in the ISDNFE is the delivery of a stage three work. Uh, here, for example, we have the API delivered by the Soul Working Group. So a piece of advice, I always give it. Um, APIs in HCNFE are no different than the interfaces defined by IFA. These are just an implementable representation of the functionality that IFA defined. What we do in this case is that obviously we have to define a protocol machinery. Uh, we are also closing the gaps left by the stage two level details of specifications. For example, we have to handle error handling. And we also model the information model to specific data models. And these are basically the results, the solar uh, APIs and the specifications. A very nice outcome also is that we have also open API representations of some of the specifications. Uh, why we do that? The reason is very simple. We want to make sure that we can speed up the adoption of APIs. And having a machine readable representation helps a lot. And this is one of the big tasks that we are working right now also in the IHG. Latest version of the APIs are the 251, so please, if you need more information, go and download this latest version. As an additional activity happening in release two, and very much link, link also to the APIs is the testing aspects. So just for you to know that we also have an ongoing work item that we are uh, making test specifications for the uh, conformance of APIs delivered by Sol. And that's the work item TST 010. Maybe Pierre will give more information later on, I think. So that is about release two. Uh, on release three, I also want to give uh, a quick overview uh, about what it is. And also I will mention 
a few of the features that we have completed in the stage one and stage two level. As I already introduced, the focus of release three is trying is to enrich the system, the architectural framework, on two main aspects to make sure that we can have an expansive deployment based on it, and we can also have enhanced operations. Because when we come to commercial deployments, operations matter. And these are very important for the network operators because if they don't get confident that they are able to operate properly an NFE system, they will never deploy it. So this is one of the aspects that we cover in the release three, trying to add features to the baseline to enrich it and make it easier to, to operate. Uh, we have features that are categorized or I categorize in four different areas, uh, the basic ones of operational framework, basically the ones that come from the release two, then the additional operation features that uh, I will give some examples later on. And then uh, also when we do this work of enhancing the system for operation purposes, we also look at how the industry evolves in terms of technologies uh, of virtualization on cloud and a network. And this is also something that we take into account when we build the release tree. And we do that also because we acknowledge the fact that for delivering uh, NFE systems that can be used for future networks, we have to accommodate those new technologies. And for example, we also have a number of work items that what they do is analyze how the NFE system can be leveraged for deployment of 5G and network slicing. Uh, so we built the release tree based on features, as I have already mentioned several times. Um, we have a number of candidate features, and what we do is we release uh, features every six months. That's the plan. And we do this uh, because we want to make sure that we can have a bunch of features completed and provide them to the stage three uh, experts so they can start delivering also APIs and descriptors based on them. In this way, we can also work in parallel and, and be more efficient. Um, we already delivered a number of them, and I will give you the examples in the following slides. And right now, what is happening is that we are already basically starting the stage three work here. If you have um, or want to get some more information about what the progress of the features is, we have also published all the progress on the NFE public wiki. So you can just click on the link and you will go there. You can also check on the release three definition document that we post on the open area and also gives you some information. Um, another uh, message I want to give on, from this slide is that the work is now going through 2018, but obviously we need to complete the stage three work, testing, uh, testing related work, and that will also go through 2019. Okay, so now I will uh, give you um, a very quick summary on some of the features that have been completed from the stage one and two perspective. Um, this slide lists the features that were completed, and I will give more information about the first five in the list. Um, in addition to those five, you can see at the bottom uh, that we also enhanced the acceleration uh, for example, to support network acceleration for VNFs and also to make sure that we have interfaces for hardware-independent acceleration. And also we described, uh, provided additional requirements to formalize the usage of hypervisors uh, on the system and also, for example, requirements when we set up the hardware environment in, in our data center. So, first one. Um, I want to give a summary about is the compute host reservation. This is an operational feature. Um, the basic objective is that we want to enable the reservation of physical hosts in the system. Um, why we do or why do we need to do that? Well, we have a number of, uh, of use cases. Uh, sometimes, for example, the operator needs to guarantee that there's resource availability in case that we have to do, for example, a maintenance process of the NFEI or the VNFs. We want to guarantee that there are certain resources available. That's why we need to reserve them. And also, for example, we have use cases of uh, security. Uh, in case, for example, that we have to deploy a VNF on a very concrete secure enclave, we need to make sure that those resources are available when we do the deployment. We have done the specification of requirements in the IFA 10 for the NFEO and the VIM, which are the two functional blocks affected by this feature. 
and we also specified uh, interfaces for uh, the reservation of the physical host. And one additional piece of information I want to give about this feature is that this feature is also progressing in parallel in open source. Uh, there's a project in the OpenStack called Blazor, and they are basically doing that, providing the functionality to OpenStack to perform this uh, reservation of physical hosts in the system. The next feature is a policy framework. Uh, here, the main idea is that the operator uh, needs to have some flexibility as well when we set up the NFV mano and the behavior of the NFV mano. Um, for that, we need policies, and we need a system that we can onboard, send the policies, activate the policies, and let the, the, the system behave according to what is the expectation also of the operator. Um, we have a specified um, new interface that is mappable to the different reference points of the NFV MANO. And we also identify the NFV MANO functional blocks as uh, policy functions, which are basically the ones that do the enforcement of the policies. We have evolved also the uh, specifications that we did in the release two into the release three by adding this new interface. Um, for example, this new interface provides operations for transferring the policy, deletion of the policy, query of the policy, and so on. Um, the work on the stage three has not started yet, but we have an ongoing approval now of a work item to start with. The next feature is the VNF snapshots. Um, if you have ever heard about VM snapshot, uh, this is very similar, but at the VNF level. And what happens at the VNF level? That obviously a VNF is, might be built from a single VM, but it's very unlikely. We need to also have a capability that we can do the snapshot of the whole VNF when we have a number of VMs, for example. And why we need to do that? Uh, simple reason. Uh, there are use cases like uh, enhancing the testing, for example, to make sure, to make sure that we have something that is uh, re replicable very quick. Or, for example, to, for troubleshooting. Uh, something goes wrong in the system, we want to capture the state of the information in the system, and then once it's captured, we have additional information when we need to do some root cause analysis, for example, with the VNF provider. So there are a number of use cases. It's also an operational feature. And we have identified uh, new operations that allow for doing this uh, creation and reversion of the snapshots. And also we have defined a new interface that allows to package these snapshots. And why we need to do that? Uh, very simple reason. We need also a good way that once a, a snapshot is uh, taken, we can uh, package it in a, in a file, and then we can have easy transfer of this file, either for the operator to retrieve it or to give it back to the VNF provider and so on. <coughs> Another uh, feature is the management of NFV Mano. Uh, here the idea is that NFV Mano assists uh, the different components can come from different vendors, different providers, uh, still, uh, there will be software, and maybe even machines running this software. The operator needs to make sure that this software is properly configured. It also uh, needs to be guaranteed that uh, the operator can monitor the performance and the faults that happen to the system, because if NFV mano goes down, it's very likely that that will be a little bit of a disaster, right? So this is basically the feature. Um, about. We are defining interfaces that allow for fault management, configuration, um, state performance and lock management of the NFV MANO stack itself. And now the work is also ramping up on the stage three level. We will have a new uh, work item which is called uh, or named ZOL009 and there we will follow a very similar approach with other um, interfaces and APIs. We are going to define RESTful protocols for NFV MANO management. And the last feature I want to talk about is uh, the NS across multiple administrative domains. Here, the uh, idea of this feature is that we want to enhance, enhance or provide new business models and um, possibilities for the network operators. Basically, what happens here is that there is a network service that is deployed by one uh, network operator on one administrative domain, but in the process of building this network service, they can also reuse network services that have been deployed by other operators or administrative domains. And basically what we do is that we nest these network services into the umbrella um, network service and we can build a bigger one. 
And for that, uh, we need additional uh, interfaces. And what we happened, or what we did, is also to identify a new reference point in between the NFPOs on different administrative domains. The type of functionality is very similar to what has already been described in the IFO 13, but here tuned for the specific case that we have interactions in between two administrative domains. And that's it. Um, those are the features I want to provide some information about. Um, I will conclude now the presentation. And I just want to give you a summary, or I would like for you at least to take a couple of uh, key takeaways from my presentation. First of all, is that on release two, uh, we are uh, almost fully complete. There are very few remaining items. And we are going to do maintenance of this release as long as we don't have the release tree ready and fully complete. But probably, basically, we are going to focus more on the protocols and data models uh, maintenance. And with regards to the release tree, I just wanted to show you that we are also progressing on the work. Uh, we have a few informative uh, study items still uh, ongoing, but very few. And most of the work is already happening on the stage two level. And now, as of September, we approve a number of work items that we are going to continue the work in the stage three. And the work will continue through 2018 and 2019. If you need more information, please click on any of the links on this website, uh, on this slide. Um, we have, as I mentioned already several times in the past, uh, all our drafts are open, uh, even when we are building them. So we don't, you don't have to wait until something is published to actually know what's going on in the Etsy NFE. And if you download the presentation later on, you will also find that there are several backup slides on the presentation and you will find references to the latest versions of the documents that we have published. That's it, thanks. If you have any quick question, I feel very sorry sometimes because I'm the first one. I'm doing the boring <laughs> presentation. And you guys awake. <laughs> That's the most important. But I hope that I wake you up. <laughs> so, yeah. You didn't offer any Any Anyway, probably there will be some questions coming up later because there will be more detailed presentations. So if you have any other question during the other presentations, feel free. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, thank you. Thank you.